Everybody's talking at me Can't hear a word they're saying Only the echoes This is maybe for all the men, but it's literally mind. for all of us about the masks we live in. Meaning, I talk about that in both books, about how we adopt masks to get through life, and at one level, they support you because they're surviving, they're survival mechanisms. So you adopt, you know, the dits, the dumbass, the jock, uh, the brainiac, they go on and on and on. But then they actually are robbing you from your real authentic self, and you actually outgrow them, but because you haven't lived in your real authentic self, it's a very, 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 very difficult thing to traverse through this gap of, wait a minute, I always identified myself as this thing that I've put on, and I know I'm not that anymore, but who am I? Basically, this movie, The Mask We Live In, is all about how, I'm gonna put it in my own words, that men have been marginalized because they are not taught how to live an authentic emotional life. And that's mostly, that's a social construct. That's created by society, it's a narrative that we live in, and you only subscribe to certain patterns of maleness that again, allow you to be a part of the tribe. Because if you get kicked out of the tribe, you do not survive. Honey children, I was a gay man. I mean, I still am a gay man. But I was a gay man growing up. You cannot be more outside of the tribe than being gay. And I found a way, I guess, to move through it, but not without my own scars. And when I was watching this movie, I realized, like, even today, my own patterning of what I think masculinity looks like, because I always thought, because I was gay, that I was feminine. And maybe, listen, there are men who are effeminate, just like there are straight men who are effeminate. There are always these scales of what masculinity is, meaning, uh, you know, the essence of who we are. But I felt so shame, uh, ashamed about my, that I would relate to women is really what it was, that I did not adhere to, right? That even to this day, my own distortion of what I think sexual maleness is supposed to look like has really come from when I was in those early stages of development. And the peer pressure of trying to conform and be who I thought I had to be in order to survive. I'm keeping it together without crying. I didn't even expect to talk about that. <laughs> That's how intense it is. And you know, the interesting thing that this movie talks about, it's so statistically driven, and it was really shocking to me in many ways, even though I'm always talking about, for men, the work that I'm doing is you have to allow yourself to feel, you have to share your feelings, you have to be okay with having feelings that you're not used to feeling, that it's not zero to 60, meaning no feeling, it's all good, I'm fine, I can take the weight of the shoulders on my shoulders, I can live everybody else's problems, I'm fine, I got it, I got it, I'm a man, I can lift a car and change the tires and drive an automobile plus a 747, but I'm fine, I don't feel any feelings, and then you erupt into a volcano mechanic like rawr. That's not real authentic feeling. But as kids, we're socialized and what we start to respond to is women, young girls, bond and are intimate and share. Like I just said, men have no real space to do that because they're taught that that is weak, feminine, or worse, gay. So you immediately shut down your own self-expression of wanting to actually bond with other men or with women. So it becomes sexualized in a really weird way, although it's genderless. You know, this, uh, this expert in the, talked about how sex is biology and that the social constructs that we adopt, adopt are basically based on culture. And some of us have lived, you know, if you come from a family, a military family, you come from a sports family, I have a guy also in Tuesday night who, who played professional football. Those are some huge archetypal models of who you have to be as a man. <clears throat> but where does that leave who you really are? And so this movie is so powerful. I highly advocate women should watch it as well because you can start to see, you know, here's the thing. Nobody gets a free pass in this culture. This is how distorted we are. Because there's a hyper-masculinity that's taught to young boys and teenagers, but there is also a hyper-femininity that is taught. My God, five-year-old girls are like taught to, yeah. I mean, that is some weird-ass shit. Everything is objectified and fetishized. So nobody gets a free pass. You start to imprint who you think authentic authenticity is 
based on constructs. They're not real. Obviously, the work is about getting back to what is being a real, authentic human being, male or female, what does a real, authentic human being look like? It just simply means the ability to share honestly and openly without putting on a mask, based on shame, usually. It's almost always shame-based. You know, these are lies that I, I subscribe to them as well. I think if you start to look at them, that our masculinity is found in athletics, that our masculinity is found in, a huge, in huge success, that our masculinity is found in domination, masculinity is found in money making, masculinity is found in sexual conquest. That's not where masculinity is found. You know, masculinity, as all of you who have relationships with women, what do women want you to be more of? <laughs> Share, talk about your feelings, what's really going on? Uh, they're very appreciative that you can change the tire. <laughs> that you are good with tools. <laughs> that you can build a birdhouse. <laughs> but they also want you to be able to say, I hurt here. I'm in pain because of this. That bothers me when you say that. When was the last time you did that? Your male best friend maybe said something that really upset you, but it's the guy code. It's, oh, it's fine, I'm fine. No, you're not. You're probably broken apart by it. Oh, but I can't tell him because then I'm... Really? You know what? Here's the thing you got to check. If you can't honestly communicate with male or female friends about what's really going on for you, those people are not your friends. What? Mic drop! Did you hear what I said? If you cannot go to someone who has said something that has hurt the spirit of who you are and share with them authentically what's going on for you, then that is not a friend that you are actually in safe, vulnerable space with. That's not a real friendship. It's so interesting to me that depression for men shows up versus aggression. They, they have five times the rate of suicide as young girls in the teen category. You know, they don't often ask for help, so that's why you know, the, the, the rate of suicide is higher, um, because they're taught, not to, they're taught to avoid intimacy. Um, they're more likely to be expelled, suspended, drop out, have ADD, not go to college, all boys. That's a whole missing subgroup of human beings there. And the thing that blew my mind the most, that I think is so interesting because it is not part of our cultural conversation yet. Look, it starts in an acting class. The Republicans like to keep talking about this terrorism thing. You know, in, in the research that I have read is like, okay, terrorism, listen, it's the new world we're living in, it's gonna happen wherever you are in the world. But actual most acts of terror occur in the hands of domestic abusers, white men in America, born and bred here in America. They're not from Syria. So there's that, but then they always get the stigma of being mentally, they, need, they have mental health problems. Now maybe some of them do, but what's the common denominator? They are almost always invariably men. Now this isn't men shaming. It's about we don't have a culture that supports a system for men to talk about real depression, real rage, real upset, being denied asking a girl out on a date and not knowing how to process it. Because in their developmental age, they have been taught not to, not to process feelings. So eventually, of course, it's gonna explode like a, a powder keg. It just makes such sense. The statistics and the science is so simple to track, but nobody's talking about that. So then we stigmatize other margins of society. So it's a mental health problem, or it's a Muslim problem. So then it becomes xenophobia. See, it's really fascinating when you start to really unravel the complexity of human beings. So kids, I just wanna end with, listen, I highly advocate everybody should always have somebody in your life that you can just call up and be like, I just have to share, this is what I'm going on with me right now. And they just listen. There's no agenda. There's no trying to change you. There's no trying to like talk you around it. It's just allowing the person the space to express whatever it means for you in that moment to be alive. Does everybody have somebody like that? If not, look, it's totally, I mean, you have an amazing support system here to do that. The school, I mean, I've just been saying more and more, you know, you have an amazing community here, so please use it. This is why it's so much bigger than acting. And maybe that's something for you to think about, when men and women this week. What kind of masks do you put on that you feel like you have to in order to persevere?
have to have it all together, have to be perfect, have to be size a size one, you have to have a 10 pack abs, you have to have certain muscles, gigantic pectorals. It's okay if you have all these things. I'm not, I'm just saying, but where does it come from? Ooh, this is so good. You have to have a Gucci bag, you have to drive the right car. See, this is really good. You start to look at where the hell have I adopted this kind of bullshit? Who made up these rules? Then it comes back to the media. And the constant propagation that my life will be happy and beautiful and wonderful and all the things that I love once I buy that and eat at McDonald's. That's a terrible example. But that's what they all do. We just consume it. Yes. My life will begin when? Comparison is the thief of all happiness. That's your thought for the day. Comparison, comparing yourself to anybody else, to Ryan Gosling, to Kate Blanchett, to where somebody else is where you think you should be in your career because at their age they had done this and that, to comparing yourself to a TV show or a billboard you see, it is the thief of your own sacredness of where you are. We have to stop doing that. All right.